shop owner, if your if your technicians are getting worn out four hours of the day, their pro their productivity drops. This machine is designed so it does a lot of the heavy work, uh, and you spend most of your time just pushing buttons here. Once you get good at it, you can get really fast with this machine too. It just takes a little bit more of a learning curve than that one. So there are upsides and benefits to this machine. Okay, so first thing, uh, I'm going to get these heads all out of the way. So this right here is our control station for everything. Uh, the first thing I want to do is just get all of the heads out of the way so when the tire comes on, it doesn't bump up against anything. So, Okay, now, um, when you start using this machine, if I'm not immediately available, something you also want to know is on the back here, there are four QR codes, those little square things with all the black dots all over it. If you scan that with your phone with a QR reader, it'll bring up a YouTube video that shows exactly how to use the machine. So, good little backup training thing on it. With that aside, if we're going to put a tire on here, the first thing I need to do is get my center cap out. There we go. And uh, this comes back to reducing the physical labor on the technician, right? You do that, you reduce um, fatigue, you reduce chances of injuries. So we simply roll this thing on and on this little plate right here, that's all you have to do. That one over there, you're going to have to lift it up and lower it onto the plate. Now what I have here, are there are three pedals here. The one in the middle makes this thing rotate the further I step on it. Or if I lift my foot, it goes the other way, so that's how I'm going to control that. The one on the right is for air pressure, which is this guy. And the one on the left does all the lifting for me, so I don't have to. There's rollers right here. As long as I step on the pedal, it'll keep that guy in. So all I'm going to do is roll this over. And I'm going to get one of these lug nut holes lined up with this guy right here, a little pin. And depending on how much I lift my foot on this thing, it'll control the speed at which this thing goes up and down. So I'm going to come down kind of light. I didn't line up. Okay, once you get used to that again, that becomes a really fast process. Now what I need to do is lock this to the head. That's where this guy comes into play. So you'll see it's got kind of a T-shape down here. Set this in the middle and turn it till it locks. So now I can't pull it out. If I push down and turn, I can pull it out. Turn in, lock it, skip all my threads by pulling the red piece, and then tighten it down. Now it's permanently attached to my table and won't go anywhere. The next <coughs> thing I need to do is get the air out of this thing. Now, years passed before tire pressure monitors. And we just put new valve stems and everything. I just take my tool, grab the valve stem, and rip it out. But if I try to do that today, what am I going to destroy? And there goes my sensor, and you know, probably 50 to 100 bucks. So what we're going to do is remove the core. So this is a valve core tool. It's just got two little teeth sticking up on it. That's all that's there. And all I have to do is inside here is the Schrader valve. Get a bite on it, unthread it. And there's my valve core right there. The exact same thing you see in air conditioning where we access that, or if you have a bicycle at home, it's the exact same piece inside that valve core. Here's a little Schrader valve like this guy. I'm going to take it out and set it aside for now. Put the air out of this guy. We're almost there. It's a little bit faster to sit here pushing the pin in, huh? Okay. Once the air comes out of this thing, what I need to do is I need to get the tire off the bead. So if you remember the rim that I had in the classroom, there's that little bump that helps lock it in place. And this thing, having the steel wire in there, it's a tight fit to this rim. And so I'm not going to be easy, able to just easily push it off. I could try. No, nope, not going to happen. Well, that's what these little wheels are going to come in and do for me. So I'm going to bring this one down close. And I want this wheel 
right in front of the rim, but not over it. So I've got a little button here, the brakes, and then I can pull this guy out. just over the tire but not over the rim. And so to knock this thing off, all I gotta do, and this thing is in uh, automatic mode, when it's in automatic mode, this sensor is going to see the rim and bump out. See it jump in by itself? I didn't do that. But what it's done is it's tucked itself between the rim and the tire. So now when I hit my pedal, I'm not quite knocking it off yet, so I'm gonna give it another little bump. There we go. All the way off. Now I need to get the bottom out. Yeah, so these all come out together. So you line up one, they're all good. I got the bottom tread out, or the, the top and the bottom beat out, so they're free. So you can see I can actually push them down and out of the way now. Now I gotta bring in this arm to pull it out. Uh, and when you do that, don't be shy. Tire loop. It's gonna make it easier to get this oh, off, and of course it's gonna make it easier to get this thing back on. So I'll just take a bit on my brush here. Like I said, I ain't gonna be shy with it. Cross the cake. Yeah. And what I want to do is I'm going to bring this arm down now with my button and it's going to tuck this piece in and behind this tire. And what it'll allow me to do is when I bring this back up, it's going to pull the tread up above it. I just have to make sure that this stays in the well back there. I'm going to use the lower roller to finish this. So 
What I'm going to do is kind of push it over so this part's in the well. Tell it to bump in, and now my roller's kind of sticking out here, and all I got to do is step on the pedal again. There we go. Okay, now if I was at the tire shop, I'd throw this one away, right? Bring in the new one. Anything I want to look for before I bring it in? Well, let's say I got a brand new one. Just toss it on there, call it good. But which side it goes? Yeah, there might be an out, right? So it might say on this thing outside and inside. Some do, some don't. Looks like this one does have something that says outside, which means on every single rim, I got to make sure that word outside right there is pointed out. Now, will it still go down the road if I put it on upside down? Sure it will, right? But it's got a design in the tread for controlling the water and it's expecting the wheel to be spinning um, in a certain direction. Now some of them might be directional, which means there's going to be a cut, kind of looks like an arrow in this thing, and it will show you, it'll say direction on the top. We just need to make sure that whatever two wheels are going on the left side of the car, they're mounted in the correct direction, so when I put them on, they're not facing backwards. Same thing for the right side. Okay, that being said, I do have an outside, so I'll check that. If there is no difference, if it doesn't say inside, outside, not directional, that means I can choose. The only thing I'd want to do is look for consistency. So if I've got lettering that's slightly more raised on this side than the other side, I'm going to try and match that. That way you don't walk up to the car and go, yeah, it looks a little bit funny. Okay, and before we put these back on, same thing with this. What is this stuff? Yeah, so it's either rendered denaturalized animal fat, which is a nice way of saying it doesn't smell, taste weird, or we wouldn't eat it. Um, or it might be a soap product, which, funny enough, is typically a animal fat product that uh, glycerized has been separated from. It. Either way, don't be shy with this. Um, if you have a spot on the rubber that's very, very dry, it's likely to catch and tear. And if I tear the bead on this tire, it's junk. Right? And the, the shop owner might not appreciate that because if I tear the tire, guess what? We're eating it, right? The customer doesn't pay for that. So make sure that you're not shy and coat this stuff really, really well. It washes off really easy if you have a little bit more on there than maybe it should have had. Okay, so we've coated this up. We've determined there is an outside. So let's see, where was it? Uh, there's my outside writing. So this needs to be facing up. Now to get this guy back on here, I can't stretch it over this thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a little bit of an angle here and bring this head back down. Now there's a little cut right here. That's what I want on the rim. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the beat of the tire over this bump and under that bump. So as it rotates around, it's stitching the tire into place. spins around, I have to make sure that the bead of this tire stays in this low spot. You want to see how there's kind of a low spot right here where my finger is? If it's up here or down there, it's going to have to stretch to go on, and this is not designed to stretch. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and just kind of let it go on. There we go. Same thing with the top. Over this bump, under that bump. And this time, I'm actually going to put my hand on a little bit to hold this down so it goes into the bump. If I have a low profile tire that's going to fight me a lot and it doesn't want to tuck in, that's what this is for. I can bring this around and use this to press down on the tire a little bit. Help me hold it into place. So as it rotates around, it'll keep it in there for me. Now, this is not a low profile tire, so it's not fighting me, but this is the part that we tend to get in the most trouble with. Getting the last part in with a tire that doesn't want to move. So I've got lots of tools. I can bring this in, and bring this guy down. And use that to hold the tire a little bit. 
And I've got a third tool, same thing. This will tuck into the bead right here. This will go through my spokes. Again, just to hold that down. Now most of the time, just pushing out with your palm is going to do it. But if you get into a difficult tire, we've got lots of tools to help us with that. All right, I'm going to get this one out. Shouldn't have any trouble. But my wheel weight's dragging all around. Okay, so that's how this takes the tire off and puts it back on. I'm going to tell you now, that one is faster to learn. But once you get good at this one, you can get speed up on it pretty quick. And more importantly is, it doesn't wear you out because there's really not nearly as much uh, physical labor in doing this. But we still have a step left. What's missing? Air. Air, right? It's not, it's not beat it up. And so we have to pressurize. And this comes back to last week. I've got a gauge here so I don't go over the 40 and have one of those exploding tires that we saw. But uh, there's also two stages to this. So this, if I step on the pedal lightly, it's going to shoot air into it. And in most cases, it'll air the tire right up. This one, no problem, pop right into place. However, if I have a rim where the tire doesn't want to seat on it because there's just the tire is too floppy and the feet seats are all the way out here, the only way to get that is to put a lot of air into it all at once. This isn't enough. There's uh, two ways that we do that. One is with an air cannon, and the other one is a method I don't use here, where you just shoot some uh, starter fluid into it and throw a match at it. <laughs> we're, we're not going to be doing that. But it works. I'll we'll get that. We'll sign a waiver. <laughs> I did, and all the air came back out. But not before I got it to beat up. Um, I'll put the pin in just a second. So here's the other half to this thing. This is a, there's a couple of different styles of air cannons out there. Um, I like the mobile ones. They tend to blast more air. They do better than this. But this works okay. The only thing you got to watch out for is that black tank down there is holding 110 PSI of pressure. It's all filled up. But what you do is you set this up against the bead, hold it there, and when you step all the way on the pedal, it unloads that bottle as fast as it can. I'll give you an example, but I'll warn you, it's a little bit loud. But, uh, Light step, it's that guy, right? All the way step on it, you feel a detent. Oh, shoot. That's the blast of air that's going to fill this thing up. So, uh, just as kind of a side note, don't so step real hard on the pedal if that's not what you just want. Off. Just, it'll wake you up. God, yeah, well, time. you get the air and I think a little bit of tire. I hurt my heart. <laughs> what? She's all right, now we're all the way. <laughs> Damn. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put my valve core back in this thing, and we're going to move over to the next machine. But, uh, you know, and I also like to know, you, you probably noticed, I don't wear gloves a lot. When I'm dealing with tires, I tend to, because they get all that funky wear, and then you get all the little sharp things poking all over the place, and I prefer to uh, not go home with little miniature cuts. I don't know what it is. I would prefer a big gash to a little cut. Big gashes hurt less. I haven't yeah. figured out what it is about the little pokes that hurt so damn much, but they do. Okay, so at this point, um, I could air this thing up here. I'm going to air it up on the other machine. It's a little bit more user friendly. But now to get this thing off of the machine, all I got to do is crack that loose. And I could unthread it, but if you pull back the red levers, you can skip all the threads. It's kind of a nice step to it. Go ahead and unlock it. And of course, I'm not going to lift it off of this thing, that's too much work. <laughs> you know, maybe once it's not a big deal, but having worked in a tire shop, I did tires for about six months, you do that all day long, it just wears you out. There's no point, let the machine do that. Okay, any questions on this? I'm going to leave this tire over here today, so if you zip through a car a little bit quick and want some practice. This is, like I said, not an easy machine to learn but it really is a great one once you've figured it out and mastered it. it. It probably took me seven or eight times before I really started to understand how this was working compared to the other one that takes one shot. Okay. It's there to help get the tire to beat up. So at some point we might have a stubborn tire in here where we put air into it but we can't get the edges to seal. 
it throws so much air into it, it causes the thing to inflate a little bit and hopefully catch on the beads and air up. Um, if you get like, a, you know, some 33 inch off-road mud tires, you've got to have an air cannon. You'll never get them on just regular air pressure. It just doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to roll over to this machine.